Finding Dory is the sequel to the Pixar movie Finding Nemo, my personal favorite movie of all time. I love Finding Nemo so much. It hits all the right beats of emotion, of comedy, of seriousness. It knows what beats to hit throughout the entire story. So to be fair, I was extremely excited for Finding Dory, and I didn't think anything could top Finding Nemo. But to be honest, Finding Dory is incredible. I would not personally say that it's better than Finding Nemo, but this is a phenomenal Pixar movie as always. Pixar has gotten this thing down to a science. They know exactly what they need to add in their movies, and Finding Dory is no different. Let's talk about what I really, really love about this movie. The big thing that concerned me going into Finding Dory was that I didn't think Dory would be able to run her own movie. She only worked as comic relief in the first Finding Nemo, so I didn't expect her to be able to carry her own individual movie. But you know what? I thought it was great. I thought they did so many great things with Dory to give her such a unique personality from not only what we saw from Finding Nemo, but expanding on it in ways I didn't expect. To be fair, we don't get much character development from Marlin or Nemo as much in this movie, but it really is Dory's show. And along with Dory, we have some great, great new supporting characters. Hank the Octopus, voiced by Ed O'Neill. Oh my gosh. He was a really, really cool character. His transition of emotions throughout the movie feels so unique and so realistic. I thought his character was great, and the way he interacted with Dory, both like physically and through comedy and talking, it worked perfectly. All the new supporting characters, I think, did a phenomenal job. Another thing I really liked about this is how they made the short-term memory loss of Dory feel impactful. In the first movie, we did see how the short-term memory loss affected Dory personally, but that wasn't until the end of the movie. And the short-term memory loss is not used in many of the sequences to be something unique. It's used to be a bit of comic relief in Finding Nemo. In Finding Dory, the short-term memory loss is played into nearly every single scene. It's great because we see Dory struggle in simple situations that wouldn't have happened in something like Finding Nemo. And while some may say it keeps driving that idea into the coffin, I thought it was fine. There's so much that goes on with Dory's character in this movie, and I loved it. The emotional attachment she had to herself and her family. And the, there's one sequence near the end of the movie that absolutely tugged at my heartstrings, and I thought it was done perfectly. There are some other parts I like about this movie, the humor. I would say this is one of the funniest Pixar movies in quite a long time. And I loved all of the sequences, even if they weren't as fun as, say, Finding Nemo. The final sequence of this movie is what I loved the most out of this movie, and it was absolutely incredible, mixing humor, emotion, and the way Dory's short-term memory loss works all together. I thought it was an absolutely phenomenal finale that I can't think of any other way they could have wrapped it up. I know a couple people were disappointed by the way the story finishes, but honestly, I thought it was done great. Dory's character arc and how she learns to cope with her short-term memory loss is one of the best parts about this movie. The emotion hits home, the comedy is absolutely hilarious, and the sequences are really fun. And just like all Pixar movies, it looks great. This is probably one of the best-looking Pixar movies in quite a long time. The only competition I think it has right now is still Finding Nemo. They both feel realistic and all the different atmospheres in these different sets work so great. Not to mention, just look at Baby Dory here. I'm flashing this on screen, I don't care. Baby Dory is the cutest thing to ever exist in a Pixar movie ever. Another thing I was extremely impressed by was the way the transitions of scenes went. There's rarely any jump cuts between scenes. It transitions smoothly from one scene to the next scene, and even when you're switching between characters like Marlin and Nemo and Dory, it transitions it so smoothly as to like show that they're in this exact same environment, doing different things but ultimately having the same goal in mind, and I thought that was done great. Like I said, the only problem I have with Finding Dory is that the sequences are nowhere near as fun as they are in Finding Nemo. They're still great, and the last sequence beats anything in Finding Nemo, in my opinion. However, as a whole, I felt they were less fun than they were in Finding Nemo. However, the sequences are still phenomenal. I don't know what more I can say. It's a Pixar movie, and they nailed it again. They know how to make movies, and Finding Dory shows that I think they can do absolutely anything.
Also, the last thing I want to say is that this is definitely a sequel to Finding Nemo. This doesn't feel like a spin-off movie, like what the title would suggest. It feels like a direct sequel. The characters all work off of each other directly from Finding Nemo, and it works great. If you guys find Finding Dory, let me hear your opinion in the comments, because I would love to hear more different opinions about people's opinion of the first Finding Nemo uh, compared to this movie. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of A Gamer's Movie Review, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!